Um, the company was established, uh, we actually introduced it at the uh, SHOT Show back in 2009, and um, it's just kind of taken off from there. You know, everyone's running out of wall space, um, and honestly, that's why a lot of people are going to European mounts anyway, is that you can get more uh, heads on the wall. Uh, well, that's that's another thing, you know, with taxidermy or shoulder mounts getting so expensive, that's another reason some people are going to European mounts too. I just started tinkering around with some ideas, and um, and that's that's how Skullworker was born. Welcome to the RNA Outdoors podcast, fueled by Ripcord Arrow Rest and First Light Hunting Apparel. At RNA, we are public land DIY conservationists that love to share our passion for the outdoors. So join us and our team as we interview professionals in the industry to share insight knowledge that helps make hunters and anglers more successful. listeners, subscribers, and fellow outdoorsmen and women. This is your host, Lucas Paw, and I'm excited to tell you about some of the sponsors that continue to help make this podcast not only happen, but grow and thrive in this digital world of audio content. This podcast is brought to you by Ripcord Arrow Rest, the bow hunter's number one fallaway rest on the market. Ripcord is known for 100% full-time arrow containment, and their patented drop dead brake system that eliminates launcher bounce back. Best of all, Ripcord is backed by their rock solid guarantee. If the original owner has a part break for any reason, it will be repaired or replaced at no charge. And did I mention, Ripcord is located in Southwest Montana where all their products are made with pride in America. Check them out at ripcordrs.com and on their social media feeds. This podcast is brought to you by First Light Clothing and Hunting Apparel. Born in the Rockies in central Idaho, First Light's mission is to create simple yet proven versatile gear that provides comfort and performance in any situation while working to promote the pursuit of ethical hunting and stewardship. I recently joined the First Light Pro Staff team and have continued to be impressed year after year in their innovations in engineering and merino wool fabrics. Ten years ago, they started putting out wool fabrics with camo patterns, and immediately this changed the game. Since then, they offer multiple layering systems and kits in various proprietary patterns and continue to raise the bar with their competition. Find them online at firstlight.com or under their social media feeds. Go farther, stay longer. All right, welcome, folks, to the RNA Outdoors podcast. We're coming to you from the Dallas Safari Club show here in Dallas, uh, one of the first trade shows uh, in the circuit uh, that comes up this winter. Um, we're day two here uh, on Friday, and uh, fortunate to be here. The weather's been uh, pretty good so far, so it hasn't uh, ailed any folks from from getting here. Supposed to be around a thousand exhibitors here. Um, they're expecting anywhere from fifty to seventy thousand people uh, throughout the weekend. So. Big weekend planned here uh, in Dallas, and uh, being that it's Friday, it's just starting to get uh, pretty busy. We should get pretty busy today. So anyway, this morning, I wanted to uh, introduce um, a company that uh, I know that I have many of their products um, for a lot of the uh, European mounts that I do, but also a company that I've been following for quite a few years uh, and been very impressed uh, with not only the quality, uh, but also, um, you know, just the product that they build and and, uh, Skullhooker. Uh, is a company uh, based in Klamath Falls, Oregon. Most of you probably heard of Skullhooker. 
but I'm fortunate this morning uh, to catch up with Rob Shaw, who is the president of uh, Skull Hooker this morning, uh, and carve out a little bit of his time to come in and just talk to us about his products and uh, what he's got potentially coming down the pike in 2018. So with that, I'd like to welcome Rob Shaw to the Arnie Outdoors podcast. Welcome, Rob. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So, Rob, just to kind of kick it off, maybe tell our listeners um, a little bit about the company, maybe just a little bit about the history of Skull Hooker, when it was established, uh, and kind of what you guys do. All right. Yeah, as you mentioned, we're, we're based in Oregon. Um, a number of our, we have an office staff there uh, in Klamath Falls, a uh, small town in southern, south central Oregon. And most of the work, as far as it goes into new products and our uh, marketing and all that, is is with other companies throughout the, the country. So we've got people that we work with from east east coast to, to the west coast. And so um, the company was established. Uh, we actually introduced it at the uh, Shot Show back in 2009, and um, it's just kind of taken off from there. So. Kind of explain, I mean, your products. I mean, for the listeners that have never heard of Skull Hooker, you guys do European skull mounts. So maybe just kind of explain, um, you know, kind of the design and, and the brains behind the product. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I honestly, I did was a person that didn't have many European mounts, believe it or not. Um, looking back on it, I think the reason for that was because I just didn't like the way they hung flat off the wall. I uh, wasn't necessarily a fan of the wood plaque either, and I think that's primarily why I didn't have anything and I have very few of them. Um, what I caught myself doing at one point was trying to, I had a number of elk that I European, and I was t- trying to tie their antlers back toward the wall. I was using some wire and screwing screws into the, the walls, trying to keep those antlers back to where it looked a little more natural rather than uh, literally kind of in a fighting position hanging off the wall. And I just kind of thought to myself, there's got to be something better out here, to, a better way to hang these things. And um, so after a little research, um, I found actually only one other product, and I, I ended up purchasing that product. Um, it wasn't, didn't work for me. It wasn't professionally finished. It was, there was a number of problems with it. And um, that's kind of how the company got rolling. Mm-hmm. Um, we, you know, um, I... I just started tinkering around with some ideas, and um, and that's that's how Skullhooker was born. That's neat. So the name Skullhooker, um, obviously, it's it's got a catchy name. You know, when when you see when you hear the name, you see the logo and the brand. It's a really neat logo. So, what's kind of the the thought process behind the name? Well, we once we um, created a our prong. That's what's actually unique to Skullhooker, the brand Skullhooker, is that we have a, a kind of a prong system that fits naturally into the back of the skull. Um, we kind of played off of that with a name. Um, we went through, and I actually solicited a bunch of friends of mine to try to figure out what would be a, a good name, um, and we felt like that was a good fit, uh, a lot of because of the, of the prong itself. So mm-hmm. That's neat. Um, so kind of based on your product, um, you know, from a design standpoint and production, I mean, what's the process in terms of just, you know, getting one of your standard mounts for a European mount? I mean, what's the time frame that would take to manufacture that product? Oh, well, like everything in our business, whether we're talking about manufacturing or advertising or whatever, we're working a year in advance. So we're, we're working on our orders for, uh, or our, our inventory for, uh, this spring at right now. So mm-hmm. it's going to be, it's, it's, it's at least a six month process to get all that, that rolling. So. Sure. So kind of, kind of with that, um, you know, thought process, um, you know, looking at your product lines offered, maybe what we'll do is just kind of walk through some of the various product lines, uh, and, and based on, you know, the type of product that it is, you maybe explain, you know, obviously you've got mounts for specific types of heads. Not every, There's probably not one universal mount that would work for all types of heads. So uh, maybe we'll start out with the little hooker and kind of what that, uh, what that was designed for and, and what animals that it, that it can be used for. Yeah, the little hooker uh, what was one of our original products. It's our uh, most well-known, and um, it's, we sell more little hookers than any other of our products simply because there's more deer hunters in the world than anything else. Um, but... It's we're, this is a wall bracket. First of all, um, we we now offer some table displays and some floor displays. We can talk about in a minute. But 
it's a wall bracket that allows you to hang a variety of small to medium sized game. So we're talking about, you know, all your deer species around the world, um, whether it be a roe deer over in Europe or just your whitetail here in Texas. Um, all of your antelope type species um, could be a pronghorn here in the U.S. or we're talking maybe a impala over in Africa. Um, but it also will hang a variety of different other species like uh, bear, for instance. Um, and what's kind of kind of unique about that um, is people always ask us, well, how can you, what do you do with the jaw? Uh, because the skull hooker, uh, little hooker product um, literally fits into the back of the skull. So you've got this jaw and you certainly want to display the lower teeth and all of the canine mm-hmm. type, uh, you know, uh, display. So what we suggest people do is just put a small bit of uh, bondo on both sides of the pivot joint. And what's kind of neat about that is you can have it closed mouth or you can uh, secure it a little bit open to show those teeth off a little bit better. So that's kind of a unique uh, feature that you're typically not going to get with a wood plaque or that type of display. Yeah. So it works with, you know, um, it works with alligators. Um, you know, you're talking about cougars, black bears, hogs, um, you know, a wide variety of small to medium sized game. Okay. Neat. And then we step up to the big hooker, which I know I've purchased quite a few of them for a lot of the elk mounts that I've done for Europeans. But maybe explain kind of, the, the again, the design and the process behind the big hooker. Yep. Um, a lot of people ask us when you need a big hooker or how do you know when you need a big hooker. Basically, the answer is, in, in a general terms, is that when you get to an elk size skull and larger, that's when you would look at that big hooker. Um, the big hooker is very similar to the the little, just much beefier and much 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 bigger bracket overall. Um, same uh, features that that our uh, buyers like from our products is that it allows you to swivel it both left and right, so you get some ability to move that head if you're going to take advantage of a corner of a room to the left or right. Uh, but most importantly, it's got that prong system where you can adjust it up and down, just mm-hmm. like the little hooker as well. So yeah. it gives you that uh, ability to truly customize the presentation to your eye and, um, you know, get that upright natural look. Um, so for the species on the little or the big hooker, excuse me, would be, you know, certainly your, all your elk. That's primarily what a lot of guys are hanging on there. But here at the Dallas Safari Club, a lot of guys are coming back with all kinds of different, um, you know, African species, and it works on a wide variety of those. Mm-hmm. So um, all of your real big game and extra large big game, you could be talking about Cape Buffalo, um, you know, elk, moose, um, you know, wildebeest. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. And <clears throat> what we've done with that big hooker, because when we first started selling those, I mean, really, I was thinking about elk primarily. Um, we really beefed up the strength of those, and we continue to do that because we got we got people just hanging all kinds of weird stuff off sure. that thing. And, you know, we want that product to be as secure as possible. Um, so and that's really important to us. Um, more so than sales, we want to make sure that the customer has a secure way to hang it, and and it's safe. You know, so absolutely. And when you got people hanging, um, you know, a seventy-inch moose off there, you know, that's, you're talking about a, a lot of weight, and yeah. uh, so it's pretty neat to see. We get a lot of uh, pictures back from our customers, and it's just crazy to see some of the some of the things are hanging out I there. I bet. Yeah, I noticed the uh, the Cape Buffalo that you've got in your display here at your booth. That's quite the quite the uh, the Cape Buffalo that you got there, and that's on a big hooker then? Yeah, that's on a big hooker. Um, we had a, a friend of mine here in Texas, uh, Corey Elling with Buck Wild Customs. He did a carving into that Cape Buffalo. Um, it's kind of kind of a neat uh, piece that he did for us. So. Yeah, for sure. Now, on the you were talking about, you know, based on kind of the design behind these, is, are they based on a weight factor? So if someone had an exotic skull that you'd never heard of, as an example, and they weighed it and it weighed 47 pounds. Would that tell you that the little hooker's better or the big hooker's better? Is, is, is there a design spec that says by weight or is it more or less by the size or the configuration of the skull? Yeah, it's the size of the skull, but for sure. Uh, the weight's not necessarily a factor, especially with the little hooker. Um, it's all about the fit of that prong that goes into the back of the skull. It doesn't necessarily mean how big those antlers are or horns or whatever the species is. It's really the skull size that dictates uh, which product you'd use. Okay. 
Um, one of the things I, I know I've had asked, because I've, I've got a few of them displayed in my house, and, you know, we live in California where earthquakes are, are pretty prevalent, mm-hmm. um, you know, actually I'm right on the San Andreas fault line, and, you know, the questions come up, you know, would this withstand, you know, an earthquake, or could a skull pop out of the back of that since it's technically not restrained? Have you had any experience, or, or anyone ever provide you any insight on that? Oh, yeah. You know, it's it's like anything you hang on a wall, whether you're talking about a lamp or a, a skull hooker with a skull. I mean, anything can get knocked off that wall if it's if it's significant enough. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we get a lot of this uh, these questions from uh, a lot of our hunters up in Alaska, actually. <clears throat> and, um, you know, what we've told them is, look, you know, a, a, certainly a minor earthquake isn't going to be enough to knock that off the skull but you get a significant one or a medium-sized one whatever the case may be what they're doing up there is they're zip tying them down and uh maybe even with some fish stronger fishing wire okay it's virtually invisible to see from the backside. um they just do it as a safety precaution you know whether they'll actually ever need to you know come to need that i don't know but yeah. um you know that's what some guys are doing too when so. you talk about a 70 inch moose which is realistic you know up in alaska last thing you want is that thing falling down depending oh. on where it's where it's mounted on you know on somebody or a piece of you know furniture or something like that right yeah so. there's no doubt okay um maybe talk a little bit about the trophy tree i know that's something that um i would say maybe is a little newer uh, to the to the industry but definitely a neat piece that you're starting to see more and more of we're seeing on social media a lot more people using those to display a lot of their trophies maybe talk a little bit about that yeah it's something we've been thinking about for quite a while actually we um we're fortunate enough to work with uh, Travis T-Bone Turner, and he he actually <laughs> wanted one a long time, a few, few years ago when I first met him. And it got me thinking about it, and uh, we've been working on that for oh, about the last year or two. And, you know, what it is is we've, you know, everyone's running out of wall space. Um, and honestly, that's why a lot of people are going to European mounts anyway, is that you can get more uh, sure. heads on the wall. Um, but the trophy tree is a floor display, uh, stands nearly five feet tall. Um, it has five sections within that tree itself. And on each section, um, there's 16 slots. So you could literally customize the height and the, if you're staggering heads up and down the tree, um, you can get them almost exactly where you want them. Um, you can also vertically align them, which is kind of a neat look. We've got a picture on our website, I believe, that has, uh, I think, five or six uh, pronghorn that are lined up vertically. It's uh, It really gives you unlimited uh, presentation options. And, uh-huh. uh, you know, the tree itself, we sell it with, um, it comes with five different uh, hooks and, and connectors for your trophies. So Okay. And then, like I said, you can add. So let's say you had it on a display where you, you could maybe not necessarily in a corner of a room, but somewhere where you could have basically your heads on all sides of the tree then. Mm-hmm. It's configured that way. Yeah, absolutely. That's yep. neat. Okay. Um, you talked a little bit about your bone bracket, which, you know, a lot of a lot of the animals now, or they're even cutting the skull cap to basically where they're not taking the whole head out. Basically, all you have is the cap. So how do you guys remedy that, or, or how, what's your process around getting those on the wall with your mounts? Yeah, um, I mean, every a lot of us have uh, a garage full of, of skull cap trophies, and you know some of them aren't even hanging uh, because they're they're cumbersome to get on the wall and try to drive a nail through them and all that. So we created a bracket uh, called the bone bracket, and just more recently we introduced the extra large bone bracket. So we have a, a bigger version of that for elk and bigger species. But for the typical bone bracket, works for all your deer and uh, those types of species. Um, unlike our uh, other products for European mounts, uh, this one you'd, you'd actually screw into the skull cap itself. Um, there'd be two holes that you would pre-drill, and then uh, this bracket would fit in behind the skull cap. Uh, but like the little hooker, big hooker, you'll get that adjustability up and down, so you can get, the, uh, <clears throat> get your skull capped uh, deer or whatever you're hanging on the wall uh, at the right angle. So that's, that's kind of important. Um, and so that was our answer to, you know, the people that have a lot of those um, mm-hmm. and um, myself included. And, you know, it's uh, 
it's kind of a neat way to to get those things back up on the wall and get them hanging right yeah and they still allow for like you said the different angle but also swiveling so you can move them essentially like the little hooker the big hooker it allows that same usability yep okay yeah and then lastly the uh, table hooker is another one that uh, i've got a few of those which i think are neat to display when i think about you talk about wall space and people are running out of that and you think about the pedestal you know thought process and taxidermy but as you start doing that it starts to get pretty expensive so these table hookers in my opinion are, are kind of a, another option for you um, if you've got trophies that you can't put on the wall yeah no it is um, we get actually more compliments on the table hooker than any of our products i mean when when i when we started the company the um my intent was to hopefully get a few more heads hung into the house you know uh, let so our, our the idea was early on let's let's create something that is professionally finished uh sleek stylish uh so maybe some of these wives that are a little hesitant of the wood plaque or just whatever maybe they we can get some more heads hung up and um you know and on those lines the table hooker design we get a lot of compliments on that it's a it's a real neat way to just get uh, a deer an antelope um, again probably small to medium sized game this is the table version of the little hooker for the wall okay. and it works for all the same species and uh, you know it's great for an office desk uh, a shelf in the home um, you know that kind of thing okay in terms of installation um maybe for the little hooker, the big hooker, I mean, just maybe kind of walk through the process on installing one of those, kind of what it takes, you know, how many holes are drilled and, that, and so forth. Well, it's simple. I mean, it's uh, it's like all of our products. They're very simple to, to install. So the first step would be locate a stud. Um, and it's important that when you get the wall plate up to your stud location on the wall, that you mount it vertically. If that wall plate's at, a, at an angle or a candid in one way or the other, that's going to create some issues with your head wanting to go left or right as well. So that's the most important part is to get that uh, wall plate up vertically, get it look, uh, secured to a stud so it's safe and it's not going to come out of the wall. And then it's as simple as putting the arm on, which just slips into the wall plate. There's two canisters on the wall plate, and those arms are tapered. So you can actually push that arm down into those canisters and, and, and secure it from actually moving. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a lot of people that use these out in outdoor patios and different things like that. So you have, there's some wind situations, so you can actually kind of lock that arm in place if you want to. Okay. Um, and then the last piece, there's, this is a third, there are three pieces, is the prong itself. And that just gets screwed onto the, um, the, prong, excuse me, the arm itself. Um, there's a center hole that you would line up for that. And then it's a matter of figuring out what angle you want, and the last screw goes into one of the uh, adjustability uh, mounting holes. Okay. So, so very, very simple. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's, yeah. I think in today's age, the, the easier, the simpler you can make something, because like all of us, I mean, we get instructions, but you got your instructions are very simple, and most folks probably don't even need the instructions to install one, I think, which is pretty neat. Yeah. No, it is. It's real It's real simple. And, you know, we do um, on our website, we've got some structural videos, and that's kind of a neat way just to kind of watch it. So Yeah. Most people are 3D learners versus mm-hmm. reading learners. So. I know I am. Yeah. Um, and just, I guess, one last thing on the product lines, maybe just talk a little bit about some of the price points for some of your products. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's that's another thing. You know, with taxidermy or shoulder mounts getting so expensive, that's another reason some people are going to European mounts, too. Um, and, you know, our products, I think, are, are very fairly priced. Um, you know, our little hooker retail is thirty four ninety nine, and the big hooker is fifty nine ninety nine, uh, as well as the table hooker. Okay. Um, both of our bone brackets are at $20 or nineteen ninety nine, And... Uh, in addition to that, uh, one thing we didn't talk about with that, that bone bracket, we have a skull cap. Um, and that skull cap is kind of works in conjunction with the bone bracket itself. It's just a way to cover up the skull cap, I mean, the actual skull cap of your trophy. You know, then when you saw off those skulls, or that, that's what's left. Um, this is a kind of a brown cover system that will cover it up. It makes it a little more stylish. And um, and so that's that's an inexpensive way to do that, and that's nine nine ninety nine. Okay. So, yeah. And then the trophy tree the right. price point on that. Yep. Trophy tree. Uh, we have retail price. It's uh, one seventy nine ninety nine. Um, it comes with, like I said earlier, it comes with five different attachments. 
Um, if somebody wants to add attachments and or poles, we have those on our website, too, for, for additional. Okay. Neat. Um, thinking about your product lines and, and some of your competition, and I know we've talked a lot about, you know, kind of the how the how the system works, but what do you think, in your opinion, you know, sets you apart maybe from some of your competition or where you see you may have a competitive advantage over some of the market? Um, I, well, we were just talking about price. I think that, you know, value is, um, is important, um, but our products are professionally done and you know that's that's the one thing we get a lot of and a lot of we we get compliments from different people customers and different things all the time and they appreciate the fact that it's it's fairly priced um they're the quality of of the product itself is second to none and you know the professionally done with their powder coated steel they're offered in two different colors so you have a color choice um, you know, those are just some of the things that, uh, that we hear from our customers mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah. I know I, I see a lot of the, uh, products, you know, in some of the retail stores. And I think from what I've seen is I think there's a, there's a quality difference in, in how they sit on the wall, how they align, how they look. I mean, you can buy some of the, the cheaper end line model, um, European mount brackets, but, um, I don't think they look, they don't have the same appearance. They don't have the right. same look. Obviously they don't have the versatility. Um, if you're mounting a, you know, a good size elk rack in a room, you know, the ones that typically stand on the wall that they don't, they, you can't put them in a corner, you can't move them anyway or swivel them. So I, right. to me, that's where I think you guys really set, you have set yourself apart versus, versus some of the, uh, some of the competitors. Um, looking forward into 18 and obviously 19, and you talked a little bit about it, you know, we're, um, you know, already looking at stuff for this spring, but, um, for 18, are there any new product lines, um, out now that haven't been out previously, or is there anything that you guys are looking at doing, uh, in the future from kind of a strategic standpoint? Oh yeah, we've, we've got, uh, um, we've got two or three projects that we're currently working on. Um, not something I can really talk about just yet, but sure. we're certainly, I think by the end of 18, going to uh, be looking at uh, unveiling a, at least one or two of those. So, okay. Yeah. Cool. And is, is your thought, I mean, with the business, um, you know, in three to five years, I mean, I guess where would you like to see or what would you like to see the company evolve to? Do you want to see steady growth? Do you want to see, are you run and maintain? Or do you want to see something that, you know, obviously turns into a, um, you know, a larger company? Yeah, no, managed growth would be probably how I would put it. I mean, we, I'm not uh, interested in just having a new product because I get the question asked, you know, every year when we show up at a trade show, what do you have that's new? I mean, we want to, you know, put our thought into products that we think are, are valuable uh, and an asset for people to have and, and, and you know, kind of like when we created Skolik or something that's maybe not out there right now. So, sure. um, you know, we're working on all of that, the, uh, you know, but I think, um, you know, looking ahead, it's, we've, we've seen tremendous growth really since we started and, and it's just been kind of sustained growth. And then now that we're adding some different product lines to it, it's just growing the company. So, uh-huh. yeah. How about like promotional gear? Do you guys provide, you know, hats and shirts and stuff like that as well on your website? Yeah. Oh well, yeah, we do. And if you get down to any of the shows we're at, we're typically giving some of those away too. Okay. Yep. Um, We've got uh, a variety of hats, a couple different T-shirts, um, you know, stickers, of course, and things like that. Sure. Yep. Okay. Um, Rob, are you a hunter? Oh, yeah. 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 So this year in 18, you got anything planned hunt-wise, or do you do a lot like over-the-counter hunting in Oregon, or do you hunt the western states? Yeah. I'm I've kind of I'm an archery hunter. I'd still rifle hunt a little bit, but i um, certainly going to do a little over-the-counter hunting in Oregon, and like everybody else, hope that I can get lucky enough to draw a few tags along the way this year. So. Yeah. Do you apply in any of the other western states? Oh, yeah. I don't know what the count is, but I think I applied in maybe six or eight. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quite a few of them. So building points. and. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm playing the game like everyone else. Yeah. yeah. Now I hear you. Well, that's neat. Um, just to kind of close out on our discussion today, um, you know, if someone is to want to get a hold of you or the company, I mean, what would be the best way? Um, obviously, you know, digital media is, is out there, but what would you recommend folks go to if they want to find one of your products? And also, where do you guys distribute to as well? Okay, yeah. Um, the We distribute through a, a lot of the major retailers like Cabela's, Bass Pro Shops, um, Sportsman's Warehouse. Um, you know, we 
in addition to that, a lot of mid-tier or, you know, uh, farm and ranch type stores. Um, there's a lot of uh, archery shops, gun shops, and taxidermists. Uh, actually, taxidermists is a big part of our business, and so we sell wholesale to all of those people. Um, we also have a website that we have. Um, we, we do sell off our website itself, and that's just golooker.com. But that our website it's, is a good resource to go to to really see different products hanging on our our brackets you know or excuse me different species hanging on our brackets and so if somebody's kind of curious about you know hanging an impala uh, wants to kind of look at it on the wall versus on a table hooker um, that's a great place to go we've got a gallery of pictures that we've created and then also some of our customers that are really really cool to see we've got some uh, scene shots of different homes and things like that and shows how elegant these things can be sure you know in a in a home and lit up and, and yeah. hanging on the wall so how about social media outlets Are you guys active on social media oh yeah yeah we've got a good following on uh, instagram we got a facebook we do a little okay. bit of twitter yep okay neat well, again, Rob, I appreciate you carving out a little bit of time to, to sit down and just talk a little bit about your company and your business. I think it's important that, uh, you know, we give um, good companies like this an opportunity to speak a little bit about what they're doing and how their products were designed. And, uh, again, appreciate you coming on, uh, and thanks for your time today. You bet. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, I wish you luck at the shows. And uh, what other shows are you planning on being at uh, for the rest of this year, at least in eighteen? Well, uh, right after this show, we have a retailer show, the ATA show in Indianapolis, um, and then we go down to the SHOT show in Vegas, or another kind of a retailer-type show there, and then uh, um, consumer shows we have. Um, I'm going to be at the Safari Club in, in Vegas right after SHOT. Um, we have uh, in the Black Ovis uh, Camo Fire booth at the Expo in Salt Lake City, he's kind of taken over that show. I used to do that, but it, I have a conflicting show with that one, too, so I... I got them doing that, and he kind of handles our our uh, products up there so at the expo at uh, in Salt Lake. Okay. Yep. So busy, busy upcoming few months for you guys. Yeah, but also this, an important part of what oh, you guys yeah, do. It's important. Um, you know, honestly, the the best part of uh, starting this business is the people I've met. I mean, there's no 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 two ways about it. I've met some tremendous people, and you know, the hunting industry's got some great people in it, and it's I'm fortunate enough to. You know, these shows are kind of a pain, and they're stacked up in a two-month period of time, But uh, and they're not all that much fun, but it is nice to catch up with these, these people in our industry and, and uh, see some familiar faces again. So. Yeah, yeah, very good. All right, Rob, well, thanks again. Um, wish you luck uh, in the upcoming shows and obviously with the business and the growth that you've got going on. And, again, just appreciate your, your time today. Yep, thank you. All right, thanks again, listeners, and tune in for another edition for the RNA Outdoors podcast. Hey everyone, this is Lucas Paw, host of the RNA Outdoors podcast. Please check out Podbean and iTunes. If you have an iPhone or iPad, go to the podcast app on your device, search for RNA Outdoors, and hit the purple subscribe button. When doing this, it will automatically upload when new podcasts are loaded and they will download into your queue. For Android users, you can access the podcast through Podbean, Stitcher, or use our website www.rnaoutdoors.com forward slash podcast. In addition, under the RNA Outdoors podcast channel, please leave a review and a five-star rating. These reviews help boost our popularity and outreach. You can also follow us on our social media outlets, Twitter at RNA Outdoors, Facebook, RNA Outdoors, and Instagram, Rod and Arrow Outdoors. All links are in the show notes as well. If you like what you've heard, we hope you'll pass along our channel to your friends and colleagues. Keep up the good fight. We cannot sit by and watch the public lands devoted to wildlife protection wither away. There's simply too much at stake. Make your voice heard, speak up, and get involved with conservation efforts. And know that every little bit helps. As we say on the mountain, go farther, stay longer. <laughs>